So can you talk or th- well, walk me through how it physically works, like the process? So if I say in here. I'll try my best. Try your best. Um, say here in Bedford, I'm like, you know what? We need a community federated mint. Uh, I want to create one. What is what is it I actually do? Like in terms of the community I have to build to manage it and then technically to deliver it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, let's say you're in Bedford and you've got Danny. Danny yourself and well you first of all the first thing you you as a community would do is decide who in your community uh, have you know a track record of being trustworthy um people who maybe <laughs> so you may not include yourself <laughs> in that list um but people i like to think who um prioritized social capital at least as much as they prioritize financial capital because of, if you think about the incentives, you're asking these people to look after capital, so financial capital. So if they prioritize um, social capital very highly, I honor uh, standing in the community and so on, that will probably be a good, good starting point. Um, and over your lifetime of being in the community and so on, you're going to have an idea of people who have just, you know, the track record of just being, you know, knights, almost like honorable, you know, trustworthy, reliable, et cetera, et cetera. So you find a, a, a group of those and, and they agreed to be what we like to call guardians of the Federation. So being a guardian is, um, other than just having good character and so on, doesn't require too much. We're gonna try and make it as simple as possible. You're gonna need to run a Bitcoin full node mm-hmm. and the Fediment software, the protocol. So we're going to work with people like Raspi Blitz, Umbrel, Noddle, etc. Start Nine to make this sort of really, really easy. You basically um, download the software, or you buy one of these devices, and it will be an, an option there to install Fediment. Then you're going to need to, as part of the setup process, and again, you, you run. The longest part is like syncing the, the Bitcoin full node. Fediment's part is only a few moments more. And as part of the setup, you're going to basically provide what are the IP addresses of the other Federation members. Let's say you found five in in a, a village of 500. So you, you put the IP addresses of the of other people and the system will self-organize, connect and set up a Federation. And what is actually created when a federation is created? So there are two parts. One, um, you will personally set up a, um, a, a public private key for one guardian, if you were one, one of the guardians, a public private key for um, yourself and your own, um, your own part of the multisig. And once that's done, you'll do two things. You will, you will form a multi-signature wallet by coordinating with the other guardians. And you'll also form this sort of almost like a decentralized service, which is the, the Chalmian Mint service, which is able to issue, create new IOUs, and is also able to destroy those IOUs, and is also able to convert. Think of it like a software equivalent of a kiosk teller machine. So, um, uh, think about the example of you're going to a fairground mm-hmm. and there's a, there's a kiosk there at the entrance. And when you go into the fairground, there's lots of rides and so on. Um, you can give them your, um, you can give them your cash and they take your cash and then they, they, in this example, they take a piece of paper and they just write a number of notes, different tokens that represent different amounts of money representing up to the equivalent amount of cash you've given them and they give them to you. Um, you can now go around onto rides and you can use them. If you don't have enough right ch- the right change, you can come back to the kiosk and say, can you give me a change for this 10 um, pound um, note that they gave you? And they can replace it with um, 10 one pound notes and then can give you change as well. And if they re- ever receive a token from you, they destroy that and then they create new ones. And if you are leaving the fairground, you can go back with whatever notes you have and you can give them 
you can choose to give some or all of them to the to the kiosk and they will look at the total value destroy them and then takes go back to their safe and take some of the um, some of the cash they have to the equivalent amount and give that to you so those are the things that they can do and the elements in terms of the system is the, is the safe to store the to store the um, cash and then the ability to, and then the, the piece of paper and pen, which gives them, the, and the bin, effectively the ability to create um, IOUs and destroy IOUs. And so those are the two bits that each um, guardian is managing the, the system to create and destroy the IOUs. Mm -hmm. That's the Chami Mint. And the ability to um, be part of the um, multi-sig that's holding the Bitcoin. So say, say we found five people we create the, the multi-sig. Do we have a choice whether it's a three or five or a four or five and all those yeah. kind of things? And yeah. There's, I guess there's no limitation. You could have 20 people or 10 of 20 or... So um, these are implementation things that yeah. we're dealing because we want to balance functionality with performance, with simplicity as well. But fundamentally, there's no reason why there's a limitation. There is, logically, you don't want less than... Uh, four, maybe three, because you want to have a situation where no one party has the ability to block a transaction. So uh, the, the logical minimum of that will be three, so that two people can always, can always um, make sure a transaction happens. Um, and there's also limitations on the largest number, just from a performance point of view, because more yeah. people, the more coordination needs to happen um to to sign transactions or perform any action on the system so although there's no hard and fast limit it's likely that most will be between three four five on the low end and sort of 15 16 to 20 on the high end so say here in bedford i find 10 members of the community that i think they're upstanding members that we trust want to do this with and they say i don't know let's call it a five of ten for the sake of this what you'd is want, it? You'd probably want to make it show that there's a majority need to sign. So majority. six of 10. Six of 10. Yeah. So say we have the six of 10. What are the things they're having to sign? And is it a manual process each time? So they're, so they, they need to download um, the, the Fediment software. Uh -huh. And it, again, it will normally be automatic as part of something like uh, a an Umbrella, Raspberry Blitz, mm. Start9, not all that sort of um, system. And just like the Bitcoin node, this is going to be a unattended operation okay. system. So once you've downloaded it and you've put the IP addresses of everybody else and you know kept your own, um, the backup of your own private keys, other than running out of hard drive space in three, four years time or something like that, um, general maintenance or, or restarting a machine if it fails, and you know, which hopefully it won't do very mm. often, just like a Bitcoin node, it'll just be will just sit there and run. You just have to keep it fed and watered with with electricity and internet. And say we create this uh, eCash for Bedford, because it's essentially an eCash token that's created based on the Bitcoin. Is that that's what the term I've heard? Um, I think for it, it's it's it's. Um, eCash is the protocol, um, oh, okay. Charm in eCash, yes. And it is a form of IOUs, but just for, um, to avoid confusion, it's, it's still effectively Bitcoin but, because you can spend it, the user experience will be like Bitcoin. It's just, but, but yes, within the federation, it's, it's these IOUs giving access to a pot of Bitcoin that's being held yeah, by I'm I'm, people. I'm thinking in like UX, I'm going back to my UX days, thinking in UX, like I've, I've uh, yep. say Danny's created, and I want want to get some of this um, uh, this Bitcoin within this uh, Xiaomi Mint. Do I say? Do I speak to Danny, or is there just a public address I go to and I send the 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 Bitcoin to it, and I get this other token representation back? So, um, so you want to receive some? In the example, you want to receive some Bitcoin, or no? I want I want to um, I want to use this uh, federated mint. I want, okay. So in the community, I, I yep. want some of this this bit this version of bitcoin yeah do i is there a just like a public address i just send it to and immediately send something but how do i actually exchange yeah. what's so, the exchange process so what you want to do is join join the federation okay so so let's take it back take it step by step so one thing i didn't go into because i um is the privacy properties of the charming mint in that example of the kiosk 
Okay. But that's that's a separate issue. Yeah, we I've can got come a whole back. privacy we, thing here. So yeah. we can come back to that. But um, so what you would do is, first of all, a federation set up. So it requires, let's say, f- five or 10 people um, that you trust within this community. They all download this piece of software and effectively click run and put everybody's IP addresses. Um, and those IP addresses could be in the form of a QR code and they can scan each other's QR codes and they're set up and run. And once it's all configured and running, it's it just operates as, as um, guardians, as long as they just keep the machines um, having electricity and internet going to them, that's for the day-to-day, all they need to do. All signing, all transactions happen in, a, in an unattended way. Okay, so when they when they have set this up, all of them will, from their, the interface of their node, will be given uh, the address, the location of the um, federation that this that's now been created. And it will probably also show it in the form of a QR code as well. So they then download a Feddy Mint aware wallet. Feddy will, will be the first, but we're hoping there'll be others and we're expecting that others will come just like there are multiple lightning wallets and so on, or existing wallets can in, integrate the functionality as well. So they download, let's say Feddy um, and the, the guardians themselves and will scan the QR code that was displayed on there the device, which is the, the location of the Federation, and that's it, they're, they're signed up, they're done, they've, they've, they've become a member of their own Federation. And can anyone join any Federation? Anyone can join any Federation, yes. Because um, it's cryptographically near perfect privacy, so there's no way to know who can join. However, um, if you wanted the, the people who are to help with the recovery of your keys in the event, of you losing your phone or and not keeping all your backups and so on which is one of the things that frightens many people from self custody you would need to be able to show that there's some they would need to know who you are to be able to um, help you recover and so that leads to a social limitation even though there's no technical limitation you'd 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 have to just be accept the chance that it'll be very hard for for them to say okay a random stranger's come up and ask for something back. And so that, that leads to this, this, this um, limitation, but it's not, not a technical one. Okay. So, so come, but yeah, so I, I so, but the, so another user comes along and wants to join the Federation, uh, let's say Danny, and it will come up to you and say, I'm interested in joining the Federation. You'll take your mobile app, you'll click the name of a Federation. It'll show you the QR code of the Federation and they will scan it with their version of the app and they will join. They'll join. And they could potentially, depending on how we want to design the, the, define the UX, we could allow it only guardians to allow people to join or anyone who's a member can allow anyone to join. That's a UX decision that we're, we're deciding. But let's say anyone can allow anyone to join, then Danny can go up to someone else and um, that person says, you know what, I'm, I'm, you, you, you're always going on about this Bitcoin thing. Um, okay, I finally get it. How do I get this thing? And instead of saying, join a join an exchange they he can instead say here just download this app um and scan this qr code done and can you imagine people joining multiple federations yes yeah so in that scenario does does it require the the token within that federation to have its own name no it will always it will always appear as bitcoin, bitcoin. within within the federation but you should think about um, think about um, if there's an app like Slack where you have multiple different Slacks you yeah. can join or Discord, multiple different Discords. And within each Discord, you have different conversations. They're not the same conversation, but they're all conversations. Um, and so, um, but there's no way of directly transferring a conversation from one Slack to another. Yeah. But this is where the power of either on-chain or on-network, you don't need to have that ability because you can instantly or near instantly use the lightning network or relatively quickly use on-chain transactions although we expect multiple people to use lightning network to transfer between federations or between federations and and other lightning wallets because the the lightning network is uh, a standard that allows for the interchange between any anything that's lightning aware but is it is it like liquid once i've yeah once i've put my bitcoin in there and i get liquid bitcoin it's a different thing. Um, 
Because the Bitcoin is held in a multi-sig. It's, it's, it, conceptually, it's similar, but instead of one liquid network used by everybody, there was hundreds of thousands, potentially, of, of um, fediments used okay. by different communities. And to send between them, um, you're, you're not penalized by that because to send between them, you use the Lightning Network. And so it still just takes a second to send between them or to send out to something that's not in within the federation. So you could, if Danny's in one federation, I'm in another, I can still send in my Bitcoin from my federation to his. Yeah, and it'll take a second or, or however long the Lightning transaction takes to operate. Or if Danny has a, um, a wallet Satoshi or a Strike wallet or a Moon wallet or or a um, coin corner wallet or any number of the other lightning aware wallets they could send to you you could just show him within your your interface from your point of view it would look like a a lightning wallet and you would you would say create invoice and it will show the qr code he's he's in australia looking through a, a zoom conversation or a, a keat conversation nowadays keat, yeah. soon um and and he can uh, scan it and the payment will be sent over the Lightning Network. So you're not penalized by being within that federation, which is why it works so well with the Lightning Network. It becomes much more practical because to uh, otherwise to transfer in and out securely will be like, like liquid. You'd have to wait a number of block transactions and so on, and block confirmation, sorry. One, so what I'm trying to understand is the federation's created. Yep. And uh, to join the federation, I, I click the QR code. I've been accepted. I'm now in the federation. Yep. And then I send Bitcoin to a an address, and that gives me this Bitcoin. Now, how do I get this Bitcoin? How do you receive from yeah. that point? Well, so, so let's so let's let's say how do I convert let's, my Bitcoin into this Bitcoin? You would you would have an app. You would have the let's say the Feddy app. Yep. You've just joined. You scan the QR code. You've joined. And then you'll say, create, um, uh, you, for example, you could say, um, create invoice. Mm -hmm. And it, just like with a Lightning, any other Lightning wallet, um, although we're aiming our user interface to be really, really, really simple, but it's ex the same as any other Lightning wallet conceptually. You'd create invoice, you say the amount you want to receive, like a thousand Satoshi's, sats, and then it'll show a Lightning invoice. And then you would have a, another wallet, say, that's a Lightning wallet, for example. And you would, that's, uh, that's connected to the, to the Lightning network with your own um, Bitcoin in it. Or you've got an exchange account that supports the Lightning network. It, it can also do on-chain, by the way, but I'm just giving yeah. the Lightning network example to begin with. And you would paste in the, um, the Lightning network if the, the lightning invoice or if it supports scanning you would you would just scan the qr code and then a lightning transaction would would occur sending the money to this address if you don't have a wallet that supports the lightning network and it's a normal wallet then you would say invoice as a, a bitcoin transaction um and it will show you the address to send bitcoin to and you would then um within your bitcoin wallet send an amount to that bitcoin address and after a number of confirmations, it will appear in your wallet as, as capable of being spent by you. And so that Bitcoin I've sent, I've paid that invoice. Does that go into like a, like gets, a pool, like into a vault? That and, goes into a multi-signature wallet yeah. managed by the 10 guardians. Yeah, and I get an IOU. And, and then once it's had enough confirmations um, to avoid things like rollbacks on the, on the main chain and so on, similar to how Liquid works, um, this is if you do it on chain. On chain, on yeah. chain. Um, That's not required for Lightning. Um, then um, the uh, Federation um, Guardians machines will know that a number. Just they'll be following the software. And the software says a number of confirmations gone by. Okay, we can create an equivalent number of of um, e cash tokens mm. for it to be used um, IOUs effectively to be used within the system and make them available to be picked up by by the user. Okay, so yeah. it, it, it almost puts those into a vault and gives me a representation. Yeah, so it's a two machines. Yeah. So like, that's like the kiosk example. The, the multi-sig wallet is the example of, of, a, of a vault 
uh, of a uh, safety box behind them. And then the piece of paper and the pen and the bin is the creation and destruction of the IOs that relate to it. So you receive some cash, you put it in the vault, that's the multi-sig. And at the same time, you then create, you know, $1, $1, $1, $5, mm. and uh, $2.50. Cents. And, and then you create those, and you give them to the person in the replacement. They can use them within, within, the, uh, within the fairground as much as they want. They can pass them around to other people. Within the fairground, it's a bearer asset, um, but it acts like cash mm. in that system. If they say, well, you know, I want to buy this ride for $2, and I've only got $5, a $5 note left, you go back to the kiosk and say, can you give me five $1 um, tokens instead? And they take the $5 token, destroy it, give five $1 tokens back. Oh, so I have to cash. have exact denominations. It's like cash. It's it, literally, it, 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 it literally like literally like a bearer cash. It, it operates the way you people think Bitcoin Bitcoin operates when they first hear about it. So it can't, it can't do change. Well, you, you just the way you'll do change with normal cash, you'll go to the kiosk and ask for change. You go to the bank and get change. Just so it's 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 the way we've been learned to deal with fear, with physical cash. Okay. In that sense, and also you can send it directly between people because each note has its own um, is is its own thing, or each token or each coin. So, but, but all of these things are happening, by the way, to you automatically by the software. Yeah, of course. So, all this, yeah, yeah. so when it's the change is not right, it will just send a message, and I've got ninety five percent of what I need. The bits that's missing, you send it. It sends a message off to the to the to the mint. And that will destroy that and give you back a set of change in a fraction of a second as you pay. If it's all automatic, that's what I want to know. Yeah, I, it's I all, actually, it's actually all don't automatic. Care about stuff because I, I'm trying to think in terms of the user. Yeah, from the that's user's the point of view, it looks exactly like what they expect. They don't from, literally go to the machine and say, "I need three ones." No, no it's all happening automatically. <laughs> but but it's also just what's happening at a technical level and what's happening at a experiential level. Experientially, it will look like a lightning wallet to a normal user. A lightning wallet which is really simple to use, um, but sign up involves scanning a QR code. And, so, and that's it. And so say me and Dan are in, in the same federation, I send half a Bitcoin to it and I get this half a Bitcoin worth of eCash. Yeah, back. but from your point of view, you've, you've given a lightning invoice and you received half a Bitcoin. Well, so you said it could be base chain or lightning. Yes. Yeah, so are we saying that, um, like, is it like Moon Wallet where mine won't know the difference? Or will I actually have like a base chain and a lightning wallet within the Feddy wallet? So the final UX. Um, to be decided. Is, but but for the purpose, so there's three different, because um, you, you asked an interesting um, question there um, in terms of the nuance, but there's three different types of transactions effectively that occur. One is intra-federation between one federation member and another federation member. And that's eCash mm -hmm. directly, and it doesn't. That's actually at a third layer. If you say base layer is Bitcoin, layer two is Lightning. This is happening in multiple sharded layer threes. We have hundreds of thousands of sharded layer threes, effectively, yeah. each one being its own um, scaling layer. So any transaction happening within that federation, within that village, within that town, doesn't even touch. Not, not only does it not touch the base layer, but it doesn't touch the the network either, the Lightning network. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, and then you have any transaction between um, a, someone within a federation and someone outside of a federation, but over the Lightning Network. So that could be someone who's got their own Lightning node or someone is using a centralized Lightning service um, or someone who's using um, one of these sort of semi-centralized, decentralized services or another federation, someone who's in another federation somewhere else. All of those will go over the Lightning Network. And then finally, there'll be transactions to the base, to sending money out the system to um, the base chain or receiving money from the base chain. Now, the first two, the way we're currently designing the system, they're going to be the most frequent ones and they will visually look the same. So they will both look like Lightning transactions, even if you're sending it to someone else within the, the federation. So the ones that most people do somewhere between 99 to 100% of the time, they will look the same. But because the format of, of a Bitcoin transaction versus a Lightning invoice and the way it works is a Lightning, Lightning invoice, the normal modus operandi is invoice and, then rec and pay invoice versus um, address and send money to an address. It might be that the UX for that is slightly different 
um, than the UX for sending to a, 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 a lightning address, which is what you see on, on um, lightning wallets today. You yeah. have a separation between on-chain and lightning, but there won't be a third separation between lightning and federation to federation.